Hello, welcome back to Serial Tech series on basic training for SAS and SATA and also the Serial Tech Bus Expert Analyzer. In the previous section, we covered a lot of items, including an introductory to SATA, uh, primitives, uh, frame transmission, power management, and OOB. In this section, we're going to go over SATA frames. My name is Matthew Hallberg. I'm the product manager at Serial Tech, and you can reach me at matt at serialtech.com. So frames, um, they are also known as a frame information structure or a FIS. The type of FIS is defined by value in the FIS type field. There are several kinds of frames in Serial ATA. The register hosted device, it's a FIS 27. This is used essentially to send commands to devices. A register device to host or a FIS 34 is used by the device to update the host on its status. You may also hear it referred to as a signature FIS. The DMA setup or FIS 41 is used by the host or device to set up a DMA transfer of data. The DMA activate is used by the device to tell the host to proceed with sending DMA data, i.e. a data FIS to it. PIO setup, which is a FIS 5F, is used by the device to tell the host it is prepared to send and receive and based on the command uh, data via PIO so that's uh, uh, the interrupt type set device bits this A1 this is used by the device to update the host on its status during queued commands and also clear the command queue of tag values when a command is completed and we'll actually cover that a little bit later on, but essentially uh, in Serial ATA you have a concept of having multiple outstanding commands and each command is, is given a unique identifier called a tag and uh, set device bits is able to clear um, many tags up at once. Then you have BIST Activate, FIS58. This is used by the host or device to put the host or device, the target host or device into a special test mode for called built-in self-test. Primarily it's used for SATIO testing which includes um, testing the device's loopback capabilities where it will send the device or host or whatever that the product under test uh, frame data and the the product under test will repeat that data back and if there's any issues with the repeating of the data then there's something wrong at the physical layer on that product under test. Then you have a FIS 46 or a data FIS. This is basically a data frame. Generally will contain payload for reads, writes, and for a TAPI it'll contain a payload which contains a CDB. Here are some examples of frames and we basically cut and pasted these from the uh, frame details view in the serial tech software. So you'll see over here this is a FIS 27, a registered hosted device, and it's a write DMA extended, so it's a command frame. And then your OBA address is spelled out here. Here's a BIST activate, which is a BIST L, and essentially, again, that's going to put the product under test into a special test mode. And then here's a registered device to host. We'll see, you know, the error bits are set, no problem, the device is ready. Um, here's an LBA address. So commands, commands are defined by the ATA TAPI command set. And the latest version is ATA 8. And this is also governed by the T13 and SATA IO organization. Commands generally consist of a couple frames from the host and device. And please keep in mind that all commands must originate from the host. That's that parent-child architecture. There are several different command flavors. PIO in and out, DMA non-data, DMA data, DMA queued, packet commands, execute device diagnostics, and device reset. Here are some of the more popular commands in Serial ATA. Identify device, which asks the device to return its device data, such as manufacturer info, serial number, feature set, etc. Set features. This is used by the host to enable and also disable features on the device like DIPM. Read and write DMA 
EXT extended. Read or write command that uses DMA as its data transfer type. And extended because this is using the 48 bit LBA addressing. Read first party DMA queued or FP DMA queued, read or write commands. These use DMA as its data transfer type, and then again it uses that command queuing feature that I talked about earlier to allow um, efficient retrieval and storage of data on the drive, which optimizes command and drive performance. And then read log extended. So read logs are used by the host to gain additional information about failures during transactions. So if there is an issue during some transfers of uh, first party DMA queued commands, you would issue a read log extended and you would ask for the NCQ command log from the device. So here are some of the commands in transaction view. So you'll see a set features. Here's that device 20 set, sorry, the register host device, the command fist, as a set features, and then the response from the device saying, okay, done. Here's a read DMA extended. So you'll see Here's the read DMA from the, from the host, at the FIS27, the data coming from the drive, and then a, the drive sending a status saying, I finished with the command. Here's a little bit more of a complicated one, a read-write first-party DMA queued. And you'll see here that there are different uh, payload sizes in these data FISs, 4096, 8192, 8192. Generally, that's one of the things that is different between serial ATA and SAS. The maximum payload size in serial ATA is 8192 bytes. So your payload can range from anywhere between 0 to 8192 bytes. Whereas in SAS, your max payload size is 1K. You also see with the write and read first party DMA queued command that here's the command that goes out, here's the device essentially accepting the command and then sending out a DMA setup. It's basically telling the host, I am ready for you to do some DMA commands uh, or allow access to my direct memory access. Then the host will send a data FIS. Later on, the device will send out another DMA activate, meaning, okay, I'm ready for you to send me more data, and the host will send data. Lastly, at the end, you'll see that there's a set device bits sent by the device that says that this particular command with tag number 19 has been completed with the status of good. So I, I kind of covered it earlier, but there's a little bit more in-depth about NCQ. It's essentially a technology that's designed to increase performance of SATA hard drives and SSDs under certain concern, uh, conditions by allowing the individual hard disk or SSD to internally optimize the order in which received read and write commands are executed. This can reduce the amount of unnecessary drive head movement or um, memory balancing, resulting in increased performance and slightly decreased wear of the drive for workloads where multiple simultaneous read and write requests are outstanding, which most often occur in server type applications. So as you see by the diagram here, the example here, um, this drive has to access uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and it has to go about moving from outside to in. Whereas the NCQ, wherever it is on the spindle or on this in this area, it's going to look for other commands that are also in this area and try to answer them. So that concludes our basic training on serial ATA. Uh, we covered some very basic concepts, and I hope that you have gained a uh, better knowledge of the Serial ATA spec. The next topic that we'll be covering is the SAS protocol. Thank you.